Hello and welcome to the 23rd video in this series of programs Chess Engine C. I'm going to carry on directly where I left off in the previous video with the square attack function. So in the last video we were setting the attack squares for the pawns and the next thing to do is set the attack squares where am I in my prepared code for the knights here and I'll quickly talk through how that works that it should be fairly self-explanatory. So we're looping with index through these eight knight directions. So say the first one is minus eight. We're then finding what piece is on this board on the board at this position at minus eight. So say we had square 55 and we took eight away from this, we we're on square 47. And say we're looking to see whether black is attacking we would then say, OK, on this square, is there a black knight on it? And so we get the piece first and say, is the piece a knight? And is the colour of that piece equal to the side that is attacking? Now, OK, say black. And if it is, return true. So that should be pretty self-explanatory and simple. The next part is rooks and queens. And here again, it's the similar idea to above with the knights, but the only difference is now is these are sliding pieces, which means, going back to our example, say we're on e4 or square 55, and the first direction in the rook array, if I remember correctly, is a minus 1. So when we take that direction, we go to 54. But then we need to keep going until we either hit a piece, and then if we do, we have to ask, is it a rook or a queen of the right colour, or we go off board. So, and if we hit a piece, we then break out of the loop. So we have to add an extra loop inside here that then iterates. So you'll see here, I'm saying, okay, what's the current direction? I'm making a temporary square, which is our square plus the direction. So at the start, this would be 55 to 54. Seeing what piece is there and saying, while this piece is not an off board, so why it wasn't one of the edge grey edge squares surrounding the board. If the piece is not empty, so there's a piece there, then we ask the question like on the knight, is it of the right type and right colour? If it is, it's attacking. Otherwise we break out of this loop because we don't iterate any further because we've hit a piece. But if we haven't, so it was empty, then we simply increment again and carry on to the next square, which would be 53, and set piece or PCE equal to whatever piece is there and the while loop goes around again if it wasn't off board, if it wasn't empty etc etc until we either hit a piece that isn't of this type or is or run off the board. So that should be pretty easy to understand. It's a bit more code but it's um, not very difficult. Exactly the same thing so I won't talk through it is done for the bishops and the queens just changing the directions and is it a bishop or queen instead of rook or queen? And then just like the knights, we do identical again for the kings. So looping through the king directions, asking you know, are the colour and piece type correct. And if we get to the bottom of this function, then we'll return false, which is a zero, because the square clearly isn't attacked. OK, so that's the completion of our square attacked function. And now what we need to do is add this square attacked function here, where I have not taken it out from when I was preparing the code earlier, so it's already in, with an extern in front of it so that we can then use it in other files in the program. Good. The next thing to do quickly is just to make this, which is OK. And now we're going to go into vice.c and have a very, very quick look at how, whether this function's working or not. I think it is because I've already checked it, but I want to show you. I've written a function here which I'm going to delete after this video called show square at by side. So square attacked by side is what I want to say. And this says for the given side, for all of the squares on the board, put an X if that square is attacked by that side and a minus if it's not. And I'd recommend you just download the code and paste this function in because it's not going to be a play any further part in the program. And then what I've done initially is in Arena I've set up a position with just highly illegal with just two queens on the board, one black, one white, and I've pasted this FEN in for that position as FEN1. I've set FEN1 up on the board here, printing the board, 
I've taken out our assert check board for now because you remember that when we check the board we check the king square and there aren't any kings on the board so I've taken that out for now and I'm simply printing white attacking using that function and black attacking. So just paste this in because it'll be deleted after this video. And now when I run this you can see that we're printing the game board where everything's okay. And now we look at the squares attack by white and you can see how much power a queen has in a game of chess because it seems to be attacking correctly and if we look at black attacking with the queen up here on d7 also the attack directions seem to be okay. So one more thing we could do in setting up our position here is we could let's say add a couple of blocking pieces in so a black pawn there and let's add in a white pawn here so it blocks off both queens in some kind of way just to make sure our blocking is looking okay. And I'll just paste that in. Oops, I've just done copy there. I'll paste that in, save, and then make and run. And now you can see indeed that the queen, well, the queen actually does get blocked off here. The reason there's an X here is because the white pawn is also attacking this direction, so that's correct and the black queen does duly get blocked off at the right place here and the black pawn I'm just looking should be attacking here and here because it's on this square here okay so everything's looking all right and I think I'll leave it there um, I checked before I did this video about half a dozen other FENs with knights on the board pawns on the board kings etc etc and all seem to be okay so I'm 90% sure that the square attack function is, is bug free, but when we've eventually written our move generator, we'll then most certainly find out. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Next video looks at how we're going to store a move inside an integer. Comments, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.